So this is the meter I purchased January 22nd, 2021. So the total was 36.30 with shipping from China. This air quality analyzer monitor elf CD digital display CO2 HC HO which is formaldehyde and uh, TVOC is total volatile organic compounds and then uh, air quality ion detector AQI I don't, so let's see so you get instead of instructions you get a uh, USB port or plug I should say cord so you can you can actually run this 24 7 if you plug it in your computer or some other you know phone charger this is my other instrument for another video I'm gonna actually get this uh, monoxide detector I figured that's a good supplement to this meter uh, we'll see how that works figure out an experiment for that it's yet to arrive so anyways I'm gonna show you the box I got and then I'm gonna open it and show you what you get is this is the box I got in the mail or actually it was in an envelope here's the meter in a plastic bag See if it turns on, we'll power it up. There we go. Got to do it in the dark. Ah, love it. It's got a nice, very colorful display. So, I like that. I like all the colors in my display. Charging cord for the battery. Comes with a battery built in it. It's good for several hours. Got an instruction booklet. Looks like it's got different tables for air quality measurements, so you know if you're in good or bad values for different measurements for formaldehyde, CO2, total organic compounds. Anyways, uh, there it is. So we'll give it a run through its paces, see if it actually is, you know, has any value at 36 bucks. And then. This thing is looking like it uh, needs some time to warm up and actually take measurements of any kind. So, just checking here, there's a, uh, looks like a real-time measurement and a, uh, some kind of a, a measurement for, uh, over the course of time, a lower, they call it a mean, a mean value. Oh, and then there's a lower good work chart for, looks like environmental overall assessment for the air quality all right so let's let's give it do some experiments with it see if it's like i say does it's just not a, <laughs> a meter that puts numbers up but actually reads something so here's the experiment there's a candle up on the top of this glass cylinder and then the bottom is my meter i'm going to light the candle the uh combustion products mostly should be carbon dioxide and water vapor I mean there might be minute amounts of other stuff in that combustion but I'm not gonna worry about that and that's outside the what the meters can detect anyway so and then I'm just gonna cover it with this frying pan it'll just dissipate the heat that comes off the candle so I don't you know get a bunch of heat build up in this container and wreck my meter down below so anyways I'm gonna go ahead and light the candle throw the fire, frying pan on top and then we'll just see what happens with the meter see what if it goes up or down so I have my candle burning up in here. Got my frying pan on top. Let's watch and see what this meter does as the candle burns. We should see the CO2 level bounce up. So give it a while. If I see my meter is going to get candle wax dripped on, I'll shut the experiment down. But so the mixing in here isn't probably too good. I don't know how to get the air mix, but. So my candle's still burning up there. My frying pan. Yep, look, it's going up. So the real time's bouncing up a little bit. All right, well now it's going down. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna let that, that burn for a while. It's a pretty big container, so.
Interesting, it's going the other way. <laughs> but I suspect suspect the uh, like they say, don't trust the real time values. So we're at 11.24 mean value. Oh, this experiment isn't actually going to I thought it would. Hmm. All right. <laughs> I mean, there might be just a hair, a bit of gap up there. For... Anyways, I'm gonna, I'm gonna time this. I'm gonna run it for about 15 minutes, 10 minutes, whatever. The, the average is 10 minutes for the carbon mono, or carbon dioxide. Oh, let's just do that. We'll get, grab a watch or clock. Starting at dead noon here, or about noon. I'll go 15 after, or 10 after, 10 after. That's keep forgetting. Me. So when the clock strikes 12:10, I'll kill the experiment. Now it's doing more of what I thought it should do. And that uh, top of that pan's really hot, naturally. And, uh, like I said, I don't want to damage my meter, so if I detect that the, this is getting really warm down here, I'll shut it off. But see, now it's going the direction I thought it should. So I'm going to run this full 10 minutes. Uh, no, don't want to have a lot of dead video space, so I'm going to basically just restart the video here in 10 minutes. But, ah, it's finally doing what I, it should do. <laughs> it's going up. It's a candle burns in my container. The, uh, watching the, uh, the value go up here. Good, perfect. So I kind of, really kind of like worried about my meter was what's going on with this meter. So don't just be patient with the meter. It's going to give weird readings real time. Uh, but generally the meter is on the rise for real time CO2 and uh, expect the mean value for 10 minutes. Now, well, that's the other problem with this. One problem with this meter would be nice to actually log something on a computer over the course of hours because you might isolate a problem with your water heater if you got a separate furnace in your basement. Uh, whatever you might actually figure make a relationship between when the water heater turns on and when the co2 levels go up or uh but this this meter does not do that it's just every 10 minutes it does another uh refresh on the uh, mean value so that's kind of a, a kind of a problem really a better meter would be be hooked to your computer you'd actually record it through the entire day and I actually run this thing been running it on my computer with a uh, USB port I mean you can leave it on all day long it's no problem uh, so well, my candles actually running out of oxygen to burn so it might go out here shortly but Oh, my candle was almost out. Burned up any. Burned up enough of the oxygen. But uh, so on the. Uh, I don't have any way to blow the air around in there. So 
it just has to uh, <laughs> find its way down in the bottom of the container but uh, So anyways, should keep going up a little bit. We'll check in another five minutes what's going on here. So I did notice our low, lower just general environmental uh, air quality, the uh, lower grid with the six. It's now blinking in the red, which means probably should be, there should be some level of concern about the air quality. Uh, yellow and green yeah something you, it's like well no no rush to get things figured out in a hurry but when it's in the red might want to think about hey what's going on here make some assessments about what's not venting properly or start popping some windows open Ooh, now it's way up there now it's going in in the top red so that top red is according to their chart that's polluted air. They don't spell polluted right, but again, just a bad translation to China, from Chinese. But yeah, no, that's some. Um, so, anyways, I'm happy so far. It's kind of as the air kind of migrates down this glass tube to the base where this meter is. We're definitely getting a uh, high value for the uh, CO2, which makes total sense. So I did see the finally the uh, mean value flipped up to 1939 parts per million for the CO2. I was a little worried because it's like man that's getting in towards 10 minutes. It's like why is that still at 900 and then the uh, real time reading up around 3000. It's like well but now I'm happy because the mean value just bumped up. So and they say put the faith in the mean value. So that's a 10 minute average, it read updates every 10 minutes. So there you go, it's in another 10 minutes. I suspect it'll move a little closer to 3000. We'll see, unless my, uh, you know, my frying pan is an airtight up on top, pretty close too. But uh, so I'm gonna give it a while. I'm gonna give it another 10 minutes just to see if the, the mean value for the CO2 bumps up from 19. 139 parts per million. I suspect it will. Anyway, so this meter is actually registering something. Way better than what you could do with your senses for that stuff. Uh, so I'm going to say yes, this meter works. Uh, as far as trusting the actual values, I don't, I, you know, it's a $35 meter. I wouldn't go that far, but you know, oh, and I, maybe I already covered this, but the uh, Again, the uh, general assessment air quality at the very bottom. It's blinking red right there. Right there. That uh, obviously is telling me hey, something bad's going on. As overall assessment uh, for your formaldehyde, your total volatile organic compounds, your CO2, all those are one of them. Combined, or they're just uh, something bad's going on. So, so just one more time. This is the mean value on the meter, but then they're over here on this uh, their little book that they're talking about an average recorded value. Mean and average, they have different meanings in statistics. So, um, not totally interchangeable as far as terms. But uh, again, this might be just a problem with uh, Chinese to English but uh, mean value is I believe is what you'd really want not an average value um, that's gonna give you the better more accurate measurement a mean value so but this is written for lay people so most people lay people would interchange average value with mean value um, so it's just Makes it easier for people to understand the meter, even though there's some loss of uh, precision in what they're talking about. So, anyways, uh, I'll just take some pictures of this booklet. Can I give it? Oh, anyways, I just pulled this out of the chamber here. So, now my average 
a real time, or my, sorry, cross it out. My real time is down to 508 parts per million. That's decent. That's uh, the main value still dropping in about 10 minutes. That should update again to something much lower. My, my environmental quality is up in the green. It's good. One is even better. So I'm not I'm not in the uh, the red bar for environmental quality. So things are improving. Of course, as you would expect, because now it's back out of that uh, chamber with the candle, my glass chamber. As far as this being a field hardy unit, not so much. Um, you rattle it. <coughs> Sounds like there's the battery inside is floating around. No way to stabilize it. It's a, you'd have to basically break this case open at the seams to glue the uh, battery in place. Most likely, it sounds like the battery rattling in there. So and that way, it's cheap. You know, they didn't didn't think this would be something you'd be carrying around inside of a sewer or you know a cave. <laughs> it's it's not feel hardy. It's uh, meant to be a static in instrument inside your house, most likely. Or you can move it from the room, but you know, not something you put in a backpack or whatever as a uh, safety meter. Just, like I say, it's rattles. 